This is just really an opportunity for you to kind of check in with your client and see, hey, how are things going? What are some of the plans for next year? You probably started discussing budgets. Like, is it going to be a little bit tighter? Is this going to be more of like a contract heavy type year? So this is a great time to kind of check in with them and see and potentially anticipate and really become a partner to them. Initiating becoming a hiring machine sequence in three, two, one. Hey everyone, it's Sam Keenly, and welcome back to Becoming a Hiring Machine. This is the show dedicated to fixing recruitment by going beyond saying what needs to change and instead teaches you how to make that change. Today, we've got a great Tactical Tuesday ahead of us. But before we get into that, I just want to tell you a little bit about the show. Essentially, we have shows within the show here. Some days we have interviews with industry thought leaders and others who are shaking up the space. Other days we cover trending topics, items that recruiters are talking about or will be very soon and what those mean for them. Every Tuesday like today, drop by for a Tactical Tuesday episode where we're gonna go deep on how to do something that you're going to be able to start doing in your day-to-day immediately following your listening. Sometimes we open it up for Q&A. Listeners can drop in questions that they'd like to hear us take on. So send those to us at podcast at loxo.co. And occasionally you'll hear a mic drop episode from Matt where he stops by to share something that he's been thinking about within the recruitment space and wants you to know. All right, for today, 2024 planning, all the fun that comes with budgets, goal setting, planning, and more. So as I said, some call it fun. Others, most people often do call it stressful though. And you know what Uncle Ben says about stress and recruiters? Great stress means great opportunity. May not have said that, may have made that up, but it had a nice little ring to it. So One thing that many internal teams struggle with is figuring out hiring needs relative to achieving the goals that their leadership lays out for them for the coming year. Do we need to be more efficient? Do we need more people? Are they going to be full-time employees? Are they going to be temporary contractors? What about some of the team members that, you know, you've been getting that spidey sense that you think they might be looking for opportunities elsewhere and you'll have to backfill them during the year? Um, You know, all these different contingencies and things that you want to play out. So Not always ideal for a company, but that's where your expertise can really come in and help them navigate those tough questions and and things that they might want to think about. So on that note, let's jump into it with Vivian. Vivian, welcome back. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Yes. And I love the, you sent me over a few thoughts before and you're calling this one Talent Vision 360. So (laughs) tell me about this, this Talent Vision annual strategy plan with your clients and what all it entails. It's really just kind of like an annual check-in um, just to kind of see, hey, how are you doing? Um, I know that this has been quite the unexpected year. Um, so what are you anticipating for next year? Are there any big projects that you know, like your manager has talked to you about? And so you kind of know you're starting to take a look at your team and you're like, okay, we have these skills, but then for this project to really take off and be really successful, we have like a few skills gaps that we need to fill and things like that. So this is just really an opportunity for you to kind of check in with your client and see, hey, how are things going? What are some of the plans for next year? You probably started discussing budgets. Like, is it going to be a little bit tighter? Is this going to be more of like a contract heavy type year? Is this going to be something where you're like, you know what, we're going to really like stack our bench we're going to get the best people that we can get and we're going to employ them all full time because we have some big plans coming up with um the company we're trying to break into maybe like a different market and things like that so this is a great time to kind of check in with them and see and potentially anticipate and really become a partner to them as opposed to them just being like oh i need a new employee i need a new contractor let me just reach out to this particular recruiter that has been at the top of my inbox, or they gave me a really good candidate before. You really want to make this a partnership where they're proactively seeking your advice and your input so that it gives you a little bit more time to actually find a great fit for them. Because the more information you have from them on what it is that they're seeking, what were some of their successes with candidates, what have been some of their like meh experiences, this is where you can really tailor and stand out and become a way better recruiter than any other regular schmegular recruiter they've worked with in the past that was like, oh, this is the job description, here's a resume, matches one to one. Especially now in the age of ChatGPT, it's so important to have someone that actually does a little bit of vetting because it's so easy to spice up and fluff up your resume a little bit to really match the job description, which is not a bad thing if you actually do have these experiences, but this is where vetting skills are going to be really important because a big trend I've been seeing on LinkedIn lately is that there's hundreds of applicants coming in for any given uh, job opening and vetting through all of those is so time consuming. And then a lot of them aren't even remotely qualified and you're wondering what made you even apply? Like Mm -hmm. what made you think this is your, this is for you? Did you bother reading through the job description? And so this is where you really want to position yourself as a recruiter to kind of alleviate that 
from the hiring manager and also figure out, well, how can we position it so that we can start reaching out to passive candidates instead of having to rely on job postings that end up bringing quite a bit more junk than hidden gems in there. Yeah, all the busy work. I saw a stat this morning. Over the weekend, someone had gotten some like 200 applicants and 4% of them were qualified after they went through. And that was just based on like, go to this website, fill out this form. And if you do that, like not even going above and yeah. beyond with anything, but it's just to show it's like people are just clicking apply, apply, apply. And they're not even possibly related or relevant to to that role. So, all right, I digress a little bit, but yeah, keep going. Tell me a little bit more about this annual plan now. So essentially you kind of, and this is something we talked a little bit about um, last week for as like a thank you, you know, just kind of have like a little like strategy session, just be like, hey, as a thank you, I really wanted to sit down with you, see how we can assist you next year. No pressure. Like I just want to be as prepared as possible and really be an asset to you as opposed to like an annoying burden. Um, And so this is where you can come in with a couple of questions specifically of like, hey, what are your company goals? as well as are there any specific needs? Are there any projects that have a deadline in the upcoming year? Do you think you're going to hit it? Or do you think you need some additional man or woman power to kind of um, fill in those like last minute gaps and get everything across the finish line? Or like we talked about before, is there anything coming up that's like a new project that is starting where you have a couple of skills gaps uh, within your team and you've already checked in with your team? Nobody's really interested in kind of upskilling in these areas, which is fine. Um, But in this case, you need someone else to kind of come in and kind of help. Um, This is also where it's really good to kind of figure out, well, what's the team dynamic? What kind of person would actually fit in culturally and in terms of personality? Because obviously you want the workplace to at least be Switzerland and neutral, not absolutely terrible, but maybe not too much fun either. (laughs) So you want it to be like a happy neutral where everybody's able to work together in a productive manner and yet still make it somewhat fun so that they're not absolutely dreading coming into work the next day. And then also kind of like, what's your budget? Is this going to be a contract heavy year? Did your budgets kind of get cut? Or um, are you actually getting uh, an increase in your budget for a headcount and things like that? Um, So this is something that is super um, important. And then also kind of like, what has your past experience with recruiting been like? What are some of like the hires that were really great? What made them really great? Um, Have you noticed that there is a difference between somebody who's onboarded in a proper way, not just, hey, onboarded with HR there in the system, but also here's the tech stack that we use. This is how we use it. These are the current processes. This is kind of what you'll be doing. And then if you have any kind of questions, feel free to ask. There's no stupid questions, although there always are. But when you're new, it's better to ask the stupid questions than to all of a sudden six months in and you don't know the most basic thing because you've been terrified to ask something that seems like it's common sense within the company. But the thing is always, you don't know that one plus one equals two until you actually learn it. So nobody was born knowing one plus one equals two. Somebody told you. (laughs) Uh, So don't be afraid to ask what's one plus one here. (laughs) Um, And then also now there's also a big, big focus on diversity inclusion, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, So this is something that you can also bring up and say, hey, are there any particular initiatives that I need to keep in mind? But keep in mind, this is a very fine line because there is a balance between diversity and inclusion as well as at some point kind of discriminating. Um, So this is where you kind of have to be a little bit more careful and have these discussions in a really good kind of way, Um, as well as what's your best way of kind of wanting to be in touch with me. If there's any particular candidate that I see is like, if I keep my eyes open and I stumble across a candidate, what kind of candidate do you want me to just say, hey, I have found this person. Um, you said you wanted somebody with XYZ skills. I have come across them. They're ready. They're interested. Do you want to chat with them? Because you don't always need an open rec to pitch a most placeable candidate. So if you know, hey, like this is not something that we need as an immediate hire, but this would be like an absolute cherry on top for the team. Like this person with like these skills, like if you ever come across someone, shoot me an email immediately. You don't need an open rec for that one. And so if you know what that kind of person is, this is where you can then also do a little bit of like more intentional MPC marketing. Um, Or if there's like a little bit of downtime in between searches, you can actually do like an MPC search for that particular uh, client. And it sounds like then you listened because you brought them someone over that they kind of mentioned would be like an absolute dream to have. And then also, what's your preferred communication style? Like, do you prefer email? Do you want me to check in with you on a monthly basis? Like, how do you want to go about this? I want to make your life as easy as possible. How do you prefer to communicate? And this is something that I think 
is really good to ask every year because people change. They come across a new productivity device. They get a new kind of like instant messaging system where they say, you know what? My emails have been blowing up. You will never be able to reach me. Text me, call me, whatever it may be. Just kind of figure out how's the best way for us to actually make this a really productive and good partnership as opposed to me being like an annoying recruiter that's constantly bothering you. And just see what they say. Just listen and figure out what are some of the things that are going on within that company. Um, because if you're in a conversation that is very informal, this is where some of the dirt might come up. And this is where you can also kind of pick up any potential red flags going into the next year, because now they're not trying to impress you to kind of be like, we really need this kind of candidate. So they're going to put on and be like, oh, I'm the best hiring manager you will ever work with. And then it turns out that it's not. And so when there's no actual stakes in the conversation, this is where some of like the more interesting things where the tea can come up. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I love that, especially that feedback one, I think is so important to have at, at this time of year. So when you're talking about, you know, communicating, especially so much can happen over the course of the year, like you said, new tools come up, but also you often see like new team members are joining the team on their side. Things that you onboard, not everyone's always there for some of those assumptions. So it's always good to go back through it. And things also change. Say, you know, what part of this process do you all not love? Does anything seem outdated, seem difficult to do? What can we tweak? And then rounding it out with just, you know, I want to be the best partner possible for you. What's worked really well this year? What hasn't worked really well? Because again, I, I'm in this to help you all at the end of the day. I don't want anything within here to be like, oh, great. Another email from Sam that I have to deal with. Like, how can I make it as easy as possible to work with you all? So don't be shy about asking those questions. Usually to your points, like those candid conversations, informal, that's what strengthens the relationship for you where they do start to pull you in and share a lot of the details that, you know, any other recruiter might just be getting, you know, the what do we absolutely have to tell them and just leave it at that versus you get the inside track, you know, the ins and outs if you're actually working there. And that's what a partner is. Exactly. And there's so much benefit to having that kind of relationship um, because you also get to kind of see what's actually going on internally so that you can also figure out who's going to be the best fit. And then if they say, hey, there's like, I absolutely hate that we have to go through five rounds of interviews. What can we do here? This is where and this is kind of the fun thing about being an adult is that you get to make your own rules. Like, obviously you have to still go through some kind of vetting and interviewing process, but it doesn't have to be the traditional one where somebody has to like be on a zoom call or something like that. You can even do like a little Google form of just kind of like having like a little assessment to really kind of highlight these particular things. Or sometimes the hiring manager can say, I need you to really do a good, good job at vetting them. And I'm willing to put down some money so that by the time these candidates come to me, I just need to vet them for like the specific skills in this particular context to really know, do they actually know all the technical stuff about this? And um, personality wise, would this be a good fit? And that's it. And that's just the one and done interview. Um, and also kind of being potentially proactive and figuring out, does HR like really need to do the interview to figure out whether this is a good fit or can we actually move this on to elevate this, take this to the next level and say, we have worked with this particular recruiter before. We have made great placements. Can we just go ahead and trust this particular recruiter and say, this is going to be a good fit in terms of recruiting? Like we know that if they bring us a candidate, they have vetted them for the cultural fit. They have hit the mark every single time. Can we skip this step to make this a little bit more efficient and kind of pitch this to HR as we're trying to make your job easier too here? How can we figure this out? How we, can we kind of alleviate all the pressure that you guys have on your plate and just really figure out the different ways that you can partner? And this can also be, hey, they just randomly call you and say, hey, I have this open rec or like, oh, this person's giving me like nightmares at night. I feel like this person needs to be replaced. Can you start looking on like the down low and kind of start pitching some candidates? And ideally, if you find someone that has this particular missing skill, find them, prioritize this because we can train this skill, but this one is an absolute gap that we have. And so this is where you can kind of get a little bit more creative, even with like the requirements of each uh, rec and things like that. I love it. All right. So as we wrap, we covered a lot of different topics in here from, you know, company goals, team dynamics, diversity and inclusion. Let's do a rapid fire. We've got like 10 categories. Let's do two to three questions each that we know. Just riff them off at the end. People can listen to them and they can start including these moving forward. So do you want to run down that with me? Let's do it. <laughs> all right. Start us off. I'll have you go through them all. Um, do you mean like understanding company goals? Yeah, all of them. So it's like 
what question like right. what are two questions you'd ask to understand company goals what are a couple questions you'd ask to understand team dynamics and and just you know something quick easy yeah. that that people can take away from this yeah um are there any new markets uh, products or services you're trying to get into this year um or even explore um this can really help you figure out maybe you need to pull someone from a different industry or background um and what are your key business objectives for the upcoming year okay easy enough and what about project specific needs what are two that you'd ask there there, I would go with what are critical deadlines for any projects coming up this year, and are there any new projects or anyone's wrapping up uh, where you need additional specialized skills or additional kind of manpower? Yeah. Love it. Speaking of skills, skill gap analysis, ready, go. Are there any specific skills that you're currently lacking on your team, and how do you envision the ideal candidate? Um, what kind of skills and experiences do they have? Okay. Team dynamics. What is the current team structure and how do you see it evolving? And are there any team dynamics or cultural aspects a new hire should fit into? Okay. And if we need to start figuring out things like budget, timeframes. What's your budget for the new hires? And um, is it for permanent? Is it contract? And uh, what are expected timelines for bringing new team members on board if you have one already? Ooh, I love that one. Um, past recruitment experiences. Have you faced any challenges with previous recruitment processes and what qualities uh, are you looking for in a candidate that exhibits like a really successful hire that you've had in the past? Mm, love it. Long-term vision. How do you see all of these roles that you have on your team evolve in the context of the company's growth, knowing everything that's about to go on? And are there any long-term talent needs that you can foresee already? Okay. Diversity and inclusion. How important is it in the hiring process? And are there any specific initiatives or goals that your company has implemented for the upcoming year? Okay. And employee development? Um, what opportunities for growth and development do you offer to your new employees? And how do you support ongoing learning and upskilling on your team? I love it. Perfect. And then we, we hit a bunch on feedback and follow-up just before we started this, this mini rapid fire round. Um, Hopefully it was helpful. I know at the end I was like, what do I need to know? What do I need to remember? Let's just bring it in right at the end. So um, this is great. I'm so glad that you you joined as always to share all this knowledge. I know, so we said 2024 planning, sometimes fun, sometimes stressful. Hopefully this makes it a little bit easier for everyone else. So Vivian, appreciate you joining as always. And as we wrap, Becoming a Hiring Machine is a production of Loxo. You can find all the show notes in the description of your favorite podcast streaming platform. Full video episodes are available on YouTube as well as our website. And if you do have a specific question that you'd ever love to hear us take on, send those over to us at podcast at loxo.co. So, all right, everyone, that is another Tactical Tuesday with Vivian. Until next time. <laughs>